Welcome, my name is David Ryan. I've been selling software over the phone since 1991. I first started doing web demos using WebEx back in 1999. And back then, uh, we were actually one of the very first WebEx resellers. So we used the tool to sell our own software and we also sold WebEx along with our SaaS software. My business partner and I have done well over 3,000 web demos using every possible web conferencing tool known to mankind and I have sat through countless others as a participant or an observer. Now, I'm not a sales trainer and I don't make money teaching demo techniques. Uh, I have sold all my life and for the past 20 years I've sold largely software and I've sold it largely over the phone. So this little training video is my contribution to the sales profession. Your web demo is a show. It's a presentation. It's a production. It is not a meeting. It is not a sales call. It can be a little interactive, but if it's too interactive, it's not a show, it's an improv. In this show, in your presentation, you are the actor, the director, the stage manager, the costume designer, and likely the playwright. So with that backdrop, let's jump right in and take a look at some of the very important techniques that are critical to doing effective web demos. All right, the first thing to remember is that this is your stage. You are there to present your solution, not to advertise or promote Microsoft or Google or anyone else, including your personal life, your dogs, your cats, pictures of your children. You're there to sell, present your product, your solution. So we want to prepare the stage so that the light shine completely on your solution. We want the audience 100% focused on your solution. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, create a web conference, start a web conference using GoToMeeting. You, you can use WebEx or Adobe Connect or other products. It doesn't really matter. They're all very similar. And I'm going to join a meeting on a second computer. I'm actually going to record the process, and I'm going to record what the participant sees. That's going to be a Windows computer. I'm going to present on an, on an Apple iMac, a big screen iMac, and I'm going to record on a Windows computer. You're going to see what the process is like. It's very, very, very important to understand what the install process is like to see and understand what the user is going through. Each product has a slightly different interface, but it's important to understand that all of them require something to be installed. In this case, it's going to want to install this EXE. Now, you know, it is, it is really, 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 I can't, I can't emphasize this enough, critical to understand what's going on so that you can help people be able to participate in a web conference. You know, don't assume that somebody has this app running or the version that you're running running on their computer. They may or they may not. A lot of times people go to a conference room to do a web conference and have a few people. They have a machine that has additional firewalls or settings and doesn't have things installed. So you need to understand what's going on, that there's a plugin that's being installed, et cetera, et cetera. You need to know what's happening and checkpoint with people. So here we go, we're going to, going to add and join in the web conference. All right, now I finally made it in to the web conference, okay? And what you're looking at now is my shared screen on my Apple computer from the viewpoint of the participant. And it's very difficult to tell immediately what the heck we're looking at. I'm, I'm on this web conference to sell SaaS Optics. It's one of my companies, it's a software product that we built and we sell. It's for metrics management for SaaS companies. Uh, it's kind of hard to even see what's going on here. There's so much going on on the screen. So we need to go ahead and clean up the stage. We want to maximize the exposure of our product at the expense of everything else. Okay, and there's two components. There's two ways that you do that. One, as the presenter, you need to clean up your screen and make sure things are correct on your screen. And then two, you have to know how the client side uh, participant app works so that you can explain to the participant how to clean up and maximize things uh, on their screen. So here we have this little windows popping up. Uh, you got all kinds of stuff that can go on here. All right, so first thing we're gonna do on, on the presenter screen is we're going to clean up our browser window. All right, you want your browser to be uh, basically a container with nothing showing. I've got my history bar here turned on. A lot of people will have their favorites or history bar. 
Or again, if somebody is going into a conference room and using another computer that's not theirs, they may have this or a higher probability that they have all kinds of junk. So we're going to turn this off. We've got another tab here that's open. Uh, brand maker, another company I'm involved in, marketing automation platform. Let's turn this one off. Now we have our toolbars up top inside of our browser. This is very important. I'm, I'm advertising YouTube and Blogger and Gmail and NetSuite and Salesforce.com. Here we're going to turn off our bookmarks bar and I'm going to turn off my trusty Samfine bookmarks bar. Now all of a sudden my browser is looking good. Now let's go ahead and maximize this window and that's better even yet however you can still see lots of other stuff going on here and one of the main things is on a Mac would be the dock and on Windows that would be the taskbar you want to try to turn all that off as the presenter you, you can turn it off on, on, you know, on Windows and Apple on the Mac it's pretty easy it's a little more complicated on Windows and then here we go we've got that turned off now you see it's off the screen now we want to maximize our screen here and we're looking better okay we've got a lot more real estate now we've kind of done everything that we can on our side with the exception of pop-ups which we'll cover in another segment so I'm going to switch over here and, and now I'm going to ask the user to do a couple of things the first thing I want to do is to get rid of the control panel all the web conferencing tools have a control panel there's one in the in, in uh, go to meeting and in Webex um, the first thing I want to do is ask the, per the people here to click the little blue button in this case to go to full screen view. That puts my app that I'm presenting in the greatest view. It gives you uh, the whole real estate of the, of the screen. And then I want to minimize the control panel. So I do that. There you go. Now I have um, a pretty much optimized stage. Looks pretty different from 60 seconds ago and now all of the focus is on my application. Now there's a few other things that I like to do when I'm doing my web conference um, in terms of checkpointing. I want to make sure that the participants see my screen. I want, to, I want to make sure that they can read what's going on on the screen and I want to make sure that they can see all the different points on the screen. So the first thing I'll do is say, you know, can you see the logo, the SAS Optics logo in the top left corner and the home menu and registers underneath? Great. And how about over on the top right corner, do you see the new report function? And I might actually even use my mouse and use my mouse as a pointer, which by the way is another topic uh, in terms of doing great web demos is, is mouse control. Right here I'm going to use it as a pointer and say, can you see this? And then the last thing I might do is checkpoint down at the bottom and say, can you see this MRR momentum report with conversion breakdown? And just make sure that what the user is seeing maps to what I'm seeing on my screen. The other very important thing I, I ask is how is the resolution? Can you read what's on my screen? Now different web conferencing tools handle the resolution in uh, different ways. Uh, one little trick that I've learned over the years with Firefox and you can do it with other browsers is that you can go in and just bump up the fonts. So on a Mac it's the command plus sign uh, and Windows it's, it's something different. But here I can do that. I can bump up the fonts and bump up the view of the screen. And now it's a little more readable for the user on the other side. If you're on a big monitor and the other people are on a small monitor, you may have this resolution problem. So it is very important to ask, can you read? If it's, if it's inverted, if you're on a smaller monitor and they're on a big monitor, it can be more of an acute problem in that the, your screen will take up only a very small portion of their screen. Different web conferencing tools handle the synchronization of those slightly differently. So again, just checkpoint, ask them, you know, play with this, try that. You should always try as best you can to match the screen resolution of your screen to the screen resolution of, of the participant. If you've got one participant, it's pretty easy to, to do that. You ask them, click here, tell me what your screen resolution is. If you've got four or five, you just can't do it. and You've got to rely on the web conferencing tool. So thanks again for, for coming to the BrandMaker demo today. Let me get started and uh, take you right into the BrandMaker application. So as we've discussed or as you've seen on our website, BrandMaker has a very robust digital asset management system. Built right into the application is the ability to store assets, to find assets very rapidly through any number of different 
mechanisms and to use those assets as you see fit in your business. So we have the concept of a light box, we have, uh, we have a, a navigation tree, we have robust searching. I'm uh, sorry about some of these pop-up messages here. I, uh, I probably should have turned those off before we got started here. Uh, anyway, here we have a couple of, uh, of items that we put in into our favorites area. We have this birdhouse. That we have well, welcome to the SAS Optics demo. Uh, as you know from visits to the website and from discussions that we've had, SAS Optics is a tool for helping you manage uh, financial information and financial metrics for your SAS subscription business. So here we are logged in, and uh, this is our home page. Across the top we have a menu. Uh, the menu gives us access to the various things that we need and which menu items you see are based on your login. Then down in the body we have a bunch of different buckets. We have the account overview bucket that includes registers, customers, contracts, various information, and gives us a summary of the counts of uh, what are in each one of those. And then we have our renewal candidates. These are transactions, they're contracts that have expired. It's one of the unique things about SAS Optics is it help, helps you know what's uh, upcoming for renewal, helps you manage it. And then down below here, we also have these uh, additional um, cockpit items that help us understand what needs uh, attention. So we have unrecognizable revenue flagged and unbalanced transactions. We'll get into what those mean in a little bit more. But again, homepage keeps you focused on the different things that you need to be focused on. Across the top, again, menus that are um, used to navigate around. Now, what's okay, so that was a lot of fun, huh? Uh, hopefully, you got the point there. Um, the mouse is not a wand. You need to be aware of what the other person is seeing, and you're probably not aware that your hand is on the mouse and moving it around. This is probably the most common problem that I see when I receive web conferences, uh, and over the years as I've taught salespeople how to do web conferences in, in companies uh, um, you know, that I've run or worked for, um, I you know, have always explained that you've, you really what you need to do is take your hand off the mouse as much as possible. And you can use the mouse as a pointer, but it's not a wand. The last thing that you want to do is distract the user. You've spent all this time and effort to clean up the stage so that everybody's focused on your content, and then you're diluting the content by having them focus on this little teeny mouse that's flying around the screen that means nothing to them. So rather than looking at the content you want them to look at and hearing what you have to say, they're watching this little mouse and it can get massively disruptive. So take your hand off the mouse wherever possible. Uh, slow movements with the mouse. If you're doing a demo and obviously you have to speak while you're moving the mouse around, um, move the mouse slowly and when you want to make a point, put your mouse where you want them to focus. Move it a little bit in a circle or back and forth once or twice identify that that's you know I've got my mouse on the menu item right here then remove your hand from the mouse and and talk about that menu item and then put your hand back on when you go back into demo mode one thing is when you when you're asked questions absolutely is a good rule of thumb take your hand off the mouse when you're answering questions